forward to hearing your poetry. Hi there. Um, can everyone hear me? Good. Thumbs up. Okay. Awesome. I hope after that quote, I hope I can do a little bit of ripping up people's emotions. Hopefully that's what I, that's what I strive for. Um, I first of all want to say I apologize. I tried to get my bird out of my room this morning, but he doesn't want to leave. Um, he won't come onto camera. He's really camera shy, but uh, because he's very, yeah, because he's hearing voices early in the morning. So he's like super weirded out, but it's fine. We can ignore him. Um, okay, so yes, I am James Summer. Um, I am the 2021 Youth Poet Laureate this year, and that is with Victoria, um, with the city of Victoria. And so I just wanted to say um, thank you for having me already. I'm enjoying it so much. So um, yeah, and I guess I just wanted to say um, kind of as Youth Poet Laureate, um, all my opportunities have been uh, really great, obviously, but um, to come into like a Zoom meeting like this and see the community that you guys have built um, is really, really special. I do a lot of small performances here and there, but um, you can tell when a Zoom meeting is special, I guess. It's been really hard because um, I used to perform so much like open mic wise, like I was always the person to sign up for every open mic in the city, um, which means I got really used to performing in person, obviously. And when you perform in person, it's like you can really feed off of your audience. So moving on to Zoom was like so weird. Like I, it, it's really hard to like, you, you can only see about like five people on that top bar. Um, you don't always know like if people are, you know, snapping or feeling, you know, you just kind of have to go off of what you feel like the room is. So um, it's been difficult, but I've been getting along and I'm sure it's been uh, very different for you guys as well. Everyone using Zoom, it's such a new thing. Although I'm really happy for technology that it's, um, we've gone to a place where uh, we can still have these meetings and not, see each other in person it kind of shows how far technology has gone okay so my first poem for you guys um I just want to talk about it a bit before I'll talk about all of my poems but um it's kind of about that it's kind of about um I wrote this like peak of um quarantine like everyone's staying at home and um I think it's been uh, a journey of um, isolation and, you know, we've all kind of had to take our time being by ourselves. So um, it's been difficult. And I think we can talk a lot about loneliness, but it's that feeling of, um, of truly, you know, just being alone with yourself that is kind of bittersweet. Um, it's given a lot of opportunities for people to learn about themselves and um, express ourselves through art, whether that's writing or, you know, visual art or music or whatever it is. Um, but it, it's also um, that lack of seeing people in physical life that is something that we need as humans. So um, this one is kind of about, um, is about that, that loneliness. Uh, so thank you. The empty promise, the I'll see you again and the let's hang out soon. The sentences I'm fully aware will never happen, but I let them stay in me. The empty promise keeps me awake, the empty bed when I want to crawl into my mom's and lie next to her, next to her lying, I say, I saw someone today. She asks, promise? It's the loneliness of knowing everyone you'll meet will one day just be a memory, a cup of coffee that was so good, but I'll most likely never make it like that again. We only talk about talking over coffee, but no matter, no matter how many times I text you, you can never seem to make it. There is no concrete evidence that soulmates exist. Adam could not handle solitude, so God created Eve. Here at last is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, and yet in every timeline, the serpent makes an appearance. 
My mind feels like buying a new house every day, although the real estate agent never has anything to say except don't buy it. Attachment theories components include the ability for humans to grow off to grow bonds with their offspring, awakening loneliness. Awake, after I've taken three melatonin tablets so I can sleep and not feel, I work so I don't have to listen, and I write poetry so I don't have to watch the time pass by me, existence of a system where only memories can hold the past and not even your best friend can pinky promise the future. And it's that empty promise. The compliment that I can't point out its legitimacy, the person whose body I finally thought was meant to fit into mine, like wine and bread, meaningless shapes become something. If Adam gets a companion, why don't I? Or am I not Adam? Maybe in the story, I'm the snake, representative of the fallen angel. It's the monarch that flies from west alone, although he's physically clumped up with the others, like parasites clinging to one another. He, like me, can't see through all the useless bodies, the faceless people. And I lie down at night staring at God, wondering why everyone else seems to have it together. This caterpillar has no clue on how to go ma about making a chrysalis, so instead he wanders around an empty milkweed plant in search of anything. I seek social connections like a detection dog at the airport. My mattress becomes soil, so I begin to decompose. Once it is written, soundness of the heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. It's that empty promise I think about. The, a different friend group every month and then realizing you never belong to anyone. Living on the border of nothing and no one, getting no results at the bottom of a Google page and the search bar reads, is there anywhere for me to go? It's a million useless answers and far too many empty promises. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I just thought I, that's a, that's a newer one, actually. Um, I've been trying to, in this time, get more of my poetry out there. Um, if you would like to read more of my poetry, <laughs> I'll just plug by social media right now. Um, you can follow me at, um, proper cat, but that's with a zero instead of an O. Um, I'll put that in the chat, but, um, on there, there's a link to my website, and I'm trying to get more poetry out there, but the, some of my poetry is actually still my high school poetry that I just keep, like, adding on to because I can't, like, let go of it. Uh, that's a newer poem, though, and so I like that one quite a bit. Um, I'm going to be touching on a few subjects, actually. I'm, like, going, I'm, like, getting a little piece of every, every subject that is kind of happening in the world. My next poem is about um, our, our um, climate state. Um, I think it's interesting how last summer or maybe two summers ago, we had so many um, climate um, marches and it's interesting how um, things have kind of just shifted with not only what's happening in the world, in our society, but um, also uh, with the pandemic, it seems like um, we've been drifted away from the climate a little bit, um, which has been interesting. But you know, obviously, I'm I'm sure people have heard of what's happening down at Ferry Creek, and I'm very um, and things are still you know happening at the legislature, and um, so it's nice to see that again I feel like I've um I too have lacked on my um activism um because it has been a time to take care of ourselves rightfully so um in these times so this is a poem that I was asked to write for um two years ago we had a, a climate anxiety haunted house which I think is the best type of haunted house because that truly is something I'm scared of so <laughs> It, it was very effective, um, but I find um, in poetry, we, th there's some, you know, there's so many almost like little secrets that people have and uh, something I've really learned, especially from writing about um, maybe technically political stuff. I wouldn't consider this a political poem, but, um, you know, stuff about the climate. Uh, 
it's one thing to talk about it, but to really share your personal experience with this, with these subjects is what um, gathers an audience, I feel like. And um, in my experience, listening to poetry, um, even if I couldn't relate to that specific experience, to feel their emotion about that subject is really important. And I think it's really important that we share our experiences through art, um, which whatever that may be. Um, so this poem, it, it talks a little bit about um, my childhood with the climate actually. Uh, so I hope you like it, it's called Estophobia. When I was six, I was scared of the summer, which is funny because summer just so happens to be my middle name, but I was really scared of the summer and I would sit by the air conditioning waiting for the next season. The fear of summer heat is called estophobia. Whenever it came, I got this feeling of suffocation in my lungs and unconsenting hug like plastic wrap around my frame. It placed a bag over my head and told me to breathe. And it was almost like my present self was trying to warn the younger one through the timelines. And it was almost like my present self was trying to let my younger self know this fear meant something. And it was almost like my present self was trying to kill off my younger self so estrophobia wouldn't do it for me. James, Summer, Rodriguez. It's just a little too perfect that I was named after the one thing that would haunt me, a ghost that lives outside my house, a ghost that when I communicate replies, you only have 11 years and soon I'll have one. And if I could tell my younger self to ask for the paper cup instead of the plastic, I would, but I can't. And maybe I'm a little privileged in the way that my little sister is a gateway to my younger self when I tell her, why don't we use the water fountain instead? I'm really telling her, practice saving your life one small step at a time. Try to put summer in its place. Show your finger to the sun and swear at the air particles and look winter directly in the eyes and say, I'm trying. Don't you wish this whole thing was just a horror movie, the psycho killer about to get you, but then the credits roll, warm weather wraps around my throat like an umbilical cord. It feeds me, but the closer it gets, the more dangerous it becomes. I'm sitting in the womb, a resting place before the real world. And when I release myself from the sitting spot, my mother looks into me and names me after my killer. I call this estophobia. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm gonna do one more poem. I think that's what I have time for. I'm not exactly sure. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do a, a joyous one after that. Sometimes I, that's another thing with like uh, performing over Zoom is um, it's really easy in person to um, look at the people and go, okay, like, what are we feeling right now? What do we need right now? And that's really hard to do. And I love like darker poetry. So I always just end up like speaking, whatever that is. And, um, I totally sometimes forget that we need light in the dark. Um, okay. So this one, um, to bring a lighter note is about my best friend. Um, I think in these, just everything that's been going on, I know I keep talking about it, but um, it's really important to understand who's with us right now, um, our friends and our family. Um, if they've been here for just a short amount of time or if we've known them for years, um, it's so important to appreciate everything that they're you know, doing and going through. Um, so my best friend, um, I've now known her for four years. We met in high school and we have been friends ever since. And um, everything has, has definitely left an impact on her. Um, she has been going through a lot lately. So even though this is an old poem that I wrote quite a while ago for her, it still stands strong because um, I think through all the darkness, I see so much light in her. She is like, just has the biggest personality I've ever seen. I think when people meet her right away, um, like just light, you know? So um, this poem goes out to her and for, it also I'm dedicating it to um, all of your guys' best friends and who you guys keep close as well. Okay. A fairy circle, 
known when mushrooms grow in a ring, up to 10 or more fungi, this is where I believe this lady comes from. In a fairy circle, this is where she dances under pure moons, naked and unafraid, swayed to the music made by ladybugs and dragonflies antagonize the humans in the distance who have lack of grace. In a fairy circle, every toadstool telling a tale of an un un underrated, unrespected girl. In a fairy circle, one person, one woman, one unconditional love, one bottle of fairy dust littering her face. The case is her face is unexplainably magical. In a fairy circle, one mouth, one third eye open, one set of wings, one body, her hobby, making boys, girls, and everyone in between fall in love. In a fairy circle, one conversation, one stab, one fight, one makeup, one someone who will always forgive. Giving for her is second nature. While many take the fruit I have to offer, she brings me more. A drawer of generosity, curiosity of how I used to look over her head and into others' eyes when she had stood in front of me with a permanent open heart. In a fairy circle, one song, one smile, one personality that cannot be matched. She's a bit of Nelly Furtado and Avril Lavigne, but her DNA is mostly pixie. In a fairy circle, many insecurities. One knows she despises, one stomach she hates, one F on her paper, her goal is one meal a day. As a child, I never imagined fairies to be so disappointed with themselves, but the number one in the Bible means you're starting anew. For pagans, it's the connection of universal life, and altogether the mushrooms make up an infinite story about morning glory suns and evening primrose bottles of vodka. Walk over bridges and step over lily pads to find her, a girl who endured the most while giving it her all, my best friend. Thank you so much. Okay, so I think wow. that's all the time I had. And I would just like to thank you once again for having me here because um, it was really special and I feel the energy and I feel the good vibes. 